Really? Was it that easy? Did it work? Looks like it did work. Listen, all right. Oh, I can test my sound. Oh, I can see it on there. Cool. Alright, well that's good. Gonna hang out down here. <laughs> cool. I think I have lighting looks pretty good. Oh. Hey, how you doing? Who's my helper? Oh, Bjorn. <laughs> yeah, I, th <laughs> I put that in there while I was waiting for the video to start. Um, it's kind of funny when I think of this trophy because back when I raced, they haven't updated this 
rider on here. This is still like a 70s style BMX bike. With <laughs> like, you'd think they would update the, the rider at some point. <laughs> But then again, have they ever updated like the bowling trophy? <laughs> cool. Is it time? No. We've got two minutes before I can open this thing. Well, I've already opened it. Spoiler, I've already taken a look at it. But I haven't taken it out of the box yet. Hey, Pat. That text is going to be hard for me to see, so I'm going to have to come over and look at the comments every so often. You can go upstairs, bud. Come on upstairs. So I'll go ahead and get this started. Um, this will be the unboxing of the bike that I don't know how to pronounce. So I just say Cisco, but I have no idea if that's how you say it. <laughs> uh, T8. Um, the reason I got this bike to do a review on is because I've... It's been out for a while, I think since 2021, and they haven't changed it much, and I've actually seen quite a few reviews on it. Um, but those that know me, I like to really get pretty detailed in when I, when I look stuff over. And I kind of am like, I've been seeing these bikes for a few years now, and I'm always like, they can't be that good, right? Like, you can't get this bike for under two thousand dollars and it'd be that good well i think i'm going to be surprised because <laughs> um this bike actually because i already like just peeked at it i mean i have a feeling i'm going to be pretty impressed it'll it'll be good when i get out and ride it and let you know how it rides um as most of you know i have the salsa rustler and it's carbon but it's got like the split pivot suspension, all that stuff. So, um, and it's also a trail rated bike, so it'll be a good direct comparison. But we're also talking many thousands of dollars more. So, yeah, I definitely agree that it's the best bang for the buck. What is this? Is this the bike that you will be keeping or is it for a review? That I don't know yet. Um, if I like it, I'll keep it around for a while. If I don't like it, I'll probably turn around and sell it. Um, I can afford giving away, uh, what was that bike, $699 bike? <laughs> Can't afford giving away a $2,000 bike, but I'll probably ride it, and if I like it, I'll update it and modify it and stuff. If I am kind of like, Eh, it's so so. I probably won't keep it. I'll just turn around and sell it. And then I'll use that money that I make selling it to put into another bike that I'll review at some point. So it's kind of my plan with my channel is I want to be able to um, keep doing this with more and more bikes as I grow my channel. So let's go ahead and take a peek. So I didn't get the purple one. Um, at every review, every one I've seen out there is the purple one, and I got the, the black one, or dark gray. Oh, look at this. It actually comes with tools. So this is starting to feel a bit like Canyon, <coughs> excuse me, but like they're providing the tools you need in the box, and that Canyon was that way too. 
Oh, this actually has metal pedals with pins. Nice. I mean, they may not be, yeah, they're not sealed bearing or anything, but at least they're way better than the, like, bikes always come with crappy plastic pedals. So we'll put those aside. And I'm not going to need these tools. Oh, check this out. Keychain. <laughs> it's a road bike. So, oh no. <laughs> This is all the rage now with, with uh, trail riding is to put a bell on your bike. All right, well, that's kind of cool. A little box of stuff that it comes with. Um, one of the things that I noticed that I, I'm glad I got because I wasn't sure what, what spec this bike was gonna come with. Let's see, these are usually all connected, so I just gotta pull it out in one bunch. This actually came with the Schwalbe tire, the Schwalbe Can you guys hear me okay? Because I have a mic over there and I can kind of see the meter and it's not going very high. See so anybody say. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right, well, there's nothing else in the box. I got everything up. So. It's interesting. So, um, I am also liking this is the only piece of foam. I remember unpacking boxes or bikes and boxes when I worked at a bike shop and they came with so much foam. It's like, not my favorite material. All right, this is all Velcro strapped on here. That's kind of cool. I should save these, but I know I'll save them and then I'll never use them. Ah, I can't find the end. There's that one. one in the same spot. Yep. So I always check, is it sealed bearing? Yep, super smooth sealed bearings. That's nice. Pretty surprising that you can get Fox suspension at this price. Um, I'm gonna put cardboard down here. Oh, they got protection on there. Um, I need, oh, there it is. I wanna put it in the bike stand, but I kinda need a seat close. I am so glad that they put a reflector on there. I just don't know what I would do without the reflector. So this is kind of interesting. You gotta hook up the dropper cable. Oh, I see how it goes. Maybe. Yeah, there's the groove. This will be interesting. I gotta pull the cable through. First of all, I have to figure out which one is the dropper cable. I just need it in there enough 
to clamp it so I can put it in the bike stand. That's going to uh, tip over. Once I get it in the bike stand, this won't be quite so chaotic. Uh, I don't know if I'm a fan of the seat. I think the seat's pretty ugly, to be honest. <laughs> that, I don't know. See, I want the drive train on this side. Okay. There it is. Can you guys see it? Should I bring a little over this way? Let's see what you. Cool. It looks pretty cool. It's got like a, a sparkly or what do you call it? Metallic kind of sparkly finish. Not quite bass boat. I mean, you could, it's almost like that, but it's a much finer grain. So that's pretty cool. It actually comes with an SLX crank. I'm totally blown away by what's on this bike, to believe, believe it or not. For, let's just say $2,000, $19.99. It has an SLX crank, SLX derailleur, right? I think so. I can tell it's an SLX cassette now that I learned about how Shimano cassettes because it's got that black outer ring. I think that's Shimano, making sure. Wow. Yeah, I don't know how they do it, honestly. Like, how do you get a bike that spec? Fox suspension for $19.99. I am blown away. Yeah, I mean, I thought when I saw, uh, who is this, Vito? Yeah, I thought when I saw the picture, I thought it came with a Dior crank. But it flat out says, it's telling me this is the right side, by the way, because, you know, I would not know what the right side of my bike is if they didn't have the R on there. But I mean, it literally says, oh, and then it's, I hate that, uh, paper-based stickers instead of the kind of more vinyl ones where when you try to peel it off, it just leaves crap all over your parts. Yeah, I'll have to clean that up. But yeah, that says SLX right there. And it's got, so here's what you normally see on bikes in this price range. Or even more. Like I, I've seen three thousand dollar bikes that'll come with a like a stylo crank set or something like that, and then it'll have a steel cog or steel chainring. Um, NX crank sets I've seen that have steel chainrings. This is a true SLX Shimano aluminum chainring. Wow. The, the rims are, must be, um, somebody can put in the comments, but or comment, uh, these are the entity. Would this be a uh, Polygon's in-house brand or is this some other brand? Cause I've never heard of it. Um, kind of heavy. I don't know if this is the tire. I've never had the Hans, Hans Domp, but. This would be the 
super trail, so it's not the DH casing, so it shouldn't be super heavy. But um, yeah, I'm blown away. I can't wait to ride this thing. This thing's gonna <laughs> part spec wise. It's right up there. All right, let's get these handlebars up in here. Oh, and the handlebars even come with the reflector. That's awesome. Thanks for installing stuff that I am just going to take off before I ride the bike. They might have to install that stuff. It might be part of their requirements to be able to sell bikes in the U.S. <clears throat> This won't be a big assembly because, well, basically I'll mount the bars and I'll put on the front wheel and now I'll just have to go over the bike. I got to get the seat in there correctly, but there's not a whole lot to install. And one of the things, the Canyon that I had, um, that thing out of the box shifted perfectly. So we'll do the same test with this thing as we'll uh, shift it once I get the handlebars on here and see how well it shifts out of the box and how much adjustment I'll need to do. This also, you know, another thing is, is this looks like a 35 millimeter. Yeah, that's a 35 millimeter clamp. So they're all current. It's not a 31.8 clamp. So more and more bikes are coming with 35 millimeter stem and handlebar clamp. Here's the part where I gotta make sure I don't drop any of these. So far, so good. There's another thing about stems now. I think they're called zero gap or whatever. So I have to figure out if this is a zero gap or not. Um, where you basically clamp the top of it all the way tight and then you just do the bottom ones and tighten your bars. but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. I'm not even going to get super critical about where they're set up. They do put a little, uh, little cross on here so you can line everything up perfectly. X, whatever it is. All right, I'm not going to crank those down too tight because I know I'm going to have to adjust them later. Um, have you seen my videos where I talk about setting up a new bike? And uh, I always move the levers in, and the whole reason I do that, that is the rear, right? Yeah, is because I want the end of the lever to be set up for one finger braking. Um, and I... Can I already tell you right now, I'm not going to like those levers. These are like huge. I'm so used to the little Shimano ones. Can you see this one here? Yeah, the little Shimano ones. <laughs> what am I, what are you asking? Does it have a door? <laughs> He 
it's missing the dark disc. What am I going to do? What if my chain goes into the spokes? <laughs> nice. Uh, that's pretty funny. Um, was it Seth or what's the, the um, Burn Peak guy? He did a whole video on dark discs. There's one zip tie. I basically have a whole bike shop in the basement here. Like I have, I don't even think there's anything I don't have right now. There might be a couple tools out there. But slowly collected all the tools I need. All right, let's put the wheel on. There it is. Thing in the front three. Yep. Nope. Look at that again, another paper. Oh no, at least it's not stuck to the fork. <laughs> oh, the dropper lever. That is weird. It's like the one thing they didn't really install fully. actually have to take the grip off and take the brake lever off to get the dropper lever on there. That's kind of funny. They put, they installed everything but that. All right, let me put a pedal on here so it's easier to test this. Oh, they don't even have, oh, they have that. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Shad rocks. Uh, I don't choose the. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So, Pat, are you going to um, order me a dark disc for this bike? Send it to me. Bring it up to Cayuna. So feel free to ask uh, any questions if you have them. They don't have to be related to this bike. Um, and get a quick and direct answer from me. Yeah, these pedals, I mean, they'll work well, but they're not going to be very good. Like, they're not sealed bearing or anything. So I don't know how long they'll last. But... They're definitely a step up from what pedals I usually see that come on a bike. Wait, what size is that? Oh, there's it. All right, I got one pedal on so we can test how well this thing shifts out of the box. How can I stand so you can see this? Not very easily. Should I put a pedal on? No, oh, that won't work. Oh, I know what I can do. I can turn the bars like this. Here we go. So, go all the way in 
into the car gear, whatever we call that. This does have a clutch on it. I can't tell. I never remember. Yeah. I think that's the hauling position. And then uh, we'll go ahead and test it. pushing to try to jump it into there into the spokes and it did not that's like they have a the derailleur all adjusted and set up already oh no i'm taking the rustler is going to angry catfish to get done um I actually was going to order the bearing kit and try to do it myself, but the guy there who I know, he, uh, he said, it's really difficult. You have to have like the presses, the little press bearing presses. You have to know how to get them out. And then he said, you have to go in a certain order to line things up. And I just was like, yeah, I'll just pay. And they don't actually charge that much money. They charge it. They're going to charge like, 80 bucks labor or something that seems pretty cheap to me for something that i would think would be a big job so, um what is my favorite trail at cayuna um that's kind of changed i mean i really like winds which is the jump line um for obvious reasons because you you gotta earn your earn your down on that one. You gotta climb that big hill. It's a pretty fun trail, but it's interesting because the more and more that I ride bison run, it's becoming my favorite trail. And the reason it is is because it's got a little bit of everything. It's got that really tight, technical, like narrow trees that you gotta dodge on some parts of the trail which is one of the things i've heard a lot of people complain about and the thing they don't like and then um it's got some fun flowy sections with jumps and berms i mean it's got a little bit of everything it's got rock gardens which i tend to hate but i mean it's got a little bit of all the features you could think of on a trail and then you can also go up and ride dynamite which is pretty cool uh, extra segment on there. So bison run is probably it right now. <laughs> so, um, have you ridden Cayuna then? Have you, have you ridden bison run? So, talking about this bike, and thinking about the pre I'm I'm kind of speechless because I don't know how they do it. And this makes me kind of think about um, the bike industry and bike companies at, as, as a whole. If a company can do this and offer this um, at this price, and yet you see companies selling this about this equivalent spec bike you easily see bike spec with the spec at like four thousand dollars so does that mean bike companies overcharge or does that mean that because some of them uh they're not consumer direct it's just that's how much more the margin has to go up I don't know. It's kind of baffling because um, I just wouldn't expect. Well, and actually, we gotta we have to realize we're in this discount phase right now. So the actual retail of this bike is uh, twenty three ninety nine. So that so we gotta not look at it as a uh, nineteen ninety nine 
$1,000 bike. We gotta look at it as a 23, because all kinds of bikes are being discounted now. But that does kind of baffle me that they're able to do it. Um, let's see what they got for it. So I'm assuming that like most bike companies, um, Polygon has their own parts spec, which saves them a lot of money. So I'm gonna assume these are Polygon handlebars, Polygon stem. Um, we already know the rims, I think, are probably one of their in-house brands. Does anybody know what Entity is? I guess I don't know. And then are the hubs. That's a Shimano hub with sealed bearings, so that's shocking. I didn't expect that. And that's a Shimano hub. And I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, those are, get the flashlight in there. Yes. Sealed cartridge bearings, Shimano hub, real Shimano. Um, discs. It is, uh, it's not a, um, oh no, it is. <laughs> it's the, um, why am I spacing the name of the Shimano, uh, center lock. That's what I'm going to say. It's a center lock rotor. I don't get it really, to be honest. I don't know how they can do it so cheap. Um, yeah, I'll talk about the Tektro brakes in a second. What was this one? I have 134 on my XL fuse comp. Could I run a 140 motor without jacking the geo too much? Um, so this is going to go, this answers a question on any bike that you decide to add more, uh, travel to. So think about when you add more travel, you're going to raise the front of the bike up that many millimeters. So you're talking 10 millimeters, which is about that much, right? And how much is that going to mess with the geometry? Probably not a lot. My question for you would be, why would you want, why, why do you think a 140 fork is more of a fork than a 130 fork? Like, um, the only reason I would do it is if for some reason I found a deal on a 140 fork and thought, oh, it's a better fork and I just want to put a better fork on it and it happens to be 140, then I would do it. But if we're talking equal forks, going from 130 millimeters on a hardtail to 140, is you're not going to gain really much of anything out of that. So I wouldn't do it to gain that extra 10 millimeters of travel. I'd only do it if you had a different fork that you're upgrading the fork and it just happened to be 140. So, um, but no, it shouldn't affect your geometry that much. It would, it's, it'll slacken it a tiny bit and raise your bottom bracket a little bit. And what it'll do is it'll actually make the front end a little easier to lift because the bike will be up just a little bit more. Um, and if you're climbing, it'll, if you do climb steep stuff, it'll make the front wheel want to come up a little easier on the climbs, but not that much to make a difference or that you can't counteract. Uh, Tektro brakes. Yeah, let's talk about the Tektro brake. Um, I don't know how they work, like how well they work until I actually ride the bike on a trail. I don't like the levers. They're just too big. When I think of, um, well, my... Hey, Duke is here. When I think of the Shimano levers, like the Shimano levers are super compact and small. And so I do slide them in and get them so I can just one finger break. Oh, by the way, do you like the paper plate? Um, but yeah, that, uh, when I ride these all the time, I'm going to hate these. Look at how big those things are. They're huge, huge levers. But 
if they work great, I'll be I'll slide them way in on the handlebar so then I can just one finger break them. And hopefully I can adjust them to be a little closer because they're pretty far away from the grip, which means I have to reach for them. So I hope there's an adjustment on here. It looks like one right here. Maybe no, I don't know. Yeah, I think that little screw will pull the lever a little closer so I don't have to reach so far to grab them. Then I'll probably leave them if they actually work good for a while. Um, and I think these are four piston. Yes. These are, these Tector brakes are four piston. So, uh, let's see. Yep. Pat answered that question. Uh, that price is pretty insane. Aluminum. Yeah. I mean, the, if you were to just buy a nice frame kit that has a shock, <laughs> they you know i see them for you know 20 27 three thousand dollars whatever um it is aluminum uh looking at the welds they look pretty good i would say i think i would give them a if i was to grade these welds i'd probably give them like a c plus or b minus so functional, they'll do the job, but they're kind of, they get a little, uh, they're not very smooth right here and here. If you ever look at like a really good welded frame and the nice beads and you can actually see the little swooping that they do, that's cool. These are kind of more blotched on there. Um, the box, I'm going to tell you a little something that I heard through the grapevine. The box says made in Indonesia. Um, somebody was telling me that because of the tariffs that were added, when was that added? Was that during the Trump administration or something? Um, what bike companies are doing is their stuff is actually being manufactured in China. And then they're going, it's usually Indonesia or Vietnam. They're routing them through there and putting, specifying that they're made in these other countries to avoid the tariffs. So I find that kind of interesting. So I have a feeling this is actually made in China and not in Indonesia. Which is another reason why the price is much lower. So let's see. Uh... 140 Pike Ultimate. What's on your bike now? What came on the fuse? Yeah. Uh, what do we got here from Billy? Must be. Like people say the levers are a bit odd, yeah. And hard to adjust, but over the rest of the component, yeah. Yeah, I. that's probably going to be what do I end up. Coming up with, I actually, um, you'll see a lot of uh, commuter bikes or you know like commuter e-bikes, things like that that come with hydraulic disc brakes, and they'll either come with the Shimano, the lower end Shimano hydraulic brakes, which also have a big lever on them, or you'll see them come with these, and I think these are like almost the exact same lever. I have a feeling the Brakes are going to work good, the calipers, because they are four piston. I can't imagine that they wouldn't. The other thing that's nice with Textro is they use mineral oil, which I prefer over DOT, um, which is what the Shimano brakes use. But I have bleed kits for both. So cool. Um, awesome. Caught up on answering questions. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Uh, much else I can do it's you know I have to go through this whole thing and fine-tune everything and get it uh, adjusted for me uh, ready to ride it um, oh I can throw this lever on there if I don't trip over boxes first 
Oh, here's the thing I do all the time. Oh, I know what I did with it. Because <laughs> I put my tools down somewhere, and then I can't find my tool. Um, oh, and I need a... I'll, uh, I'll put that dropper uh, lever on there, and then we'll pull it out of the stand and set it here so you can see what it looks like on the ground. They have the like grips backwards, I think. Yeah, so I would I would put this one on this side to adjust it and whatever, but I mean it's not a big deal. That's being mighty picky. I believe I want this dropper lever inside. Um, I think I need the smaller tool for that. Yeah, this will be fun to ride. It's um 150 in the front if you don't know, 140 in the rear. So definitely trail bike category. So if you've been watching my channel, you'll know that I did my first BMX race in 15 years yesterday, last night. That was pretty fun. Oh, so if I'm going to, yeah, see, I actually want this on the inside. Then if I have to move the levers this much, I actually want the dropper lever on the inside to get that closer because this doesn't have that long of a reach. Not like my wolf tooth ones. The cable, well, ah, no, that's fine. All right, let's take it out of the stand. Oh, let me put the other pedal on first. Never forget to put a little bit of grease on your pedal threads. Have you ever had to take a pedal off of a bike after the pedal's been like rusted in there because somebody didn't move it. Um, when I worked at Twin City BMX in the 90s, a lot of the BMX, like the mid range and the cheaper BMX bikes, came with one piece cranks and we would get bikes that came from other bike shops where they didn't grease the threads. And we, multiple times, we had to cut the crank off with the hacksaw because there was no way we could get the pedal off. Unfortunately, a lot of times the customer, what they wanted was new pedals. <laughs> and then they ended up having to buy a new crank. Oh, we got to weigh this thing. That's also part of this deal. Got the scale right there. That is not that. What size is that? Oh, weird. 
actually bigger than normal. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the seat. I I think the the thing that I don't like about it is it's this like glossy kind of vinyl. I have a feeling I'm gonna hate that when I'm riding in hot weather. But so there it is. Yeah, it feels pretty. I mean. It weighs what I would expect an aluminum full suspension bike to weigh. So um, I'm going to get this box out of the way, and then we'll go ahead and weigh it. Let's see if we've got any new questions. Um, so the D, I believe, is their enduro bike. Is that right? Have more travel. And the T is their trail bike. That's my guess. Um, I got a size small. Oh, you're five six. I I would push you toward the small. I know they don't. So here's, here's the thing. I feel like their sizes are too, they want you to go too big. Um, the reach on this bike is, this thing on here. The reach on this bike is pretty long. I mean, this is a size small, and it feels pretty good. Um, I feel like, you know, their thing told me to get a medium, but that was like an extra 20 millimeters of reach. And if you've ever um, seen my video on RAD, Rider Area Distance, that's that measurement from the center of your spindle, crank spindle, to the center of where your grips line up with your hands on the grips. So right about here, you got to tie strings and have a string here and do that measurement. Well, if that measurement is longer than when you're standing there in your fist, center of your fist to the ground, then your rad plus and rad plus, uh, you don't have as much control over the bike. So that's what I was worried about with getting the medium because on my Rustler, I'm right on the cusp of that. So, but this feels about the right size. I think if I would've got a medium, I'm 5'7", so if I would've got a medium, this would've been too big. And this is a short stem. I wanna say this is a, I bet you that's a 35. So the bars are going to be closer. Let's measure that. Yep. So the stem's a 35 millimeter stem, uh, thir 35 millimeter reach. It's also a 35 millimeter clamp. Um, I believe. Yep. So, um, super short stem. So if you felt like the bars were too close, you could go with a 40 or 50 millimeter stem. So I, if I were you, I would go with a small and then if you wanted the bars out a little more, I'd get a longer stem. But um, the only, the advantage, so in the size small, you can only get 27.5 wheels. You can't get 29 inch wheels. In the medium, you can choose whether you want 27.5 or 29. Don't fall. Um, and so you might, if you really want a 29er, you have to go medium. 
but then you're getting even bigger and more <laughs> bigger wheels longer frame i think it's a 460 millimeter reach on the medium um gravel bike fitment wow that's a whole nother ball game um gravel bikes no um any kind of road style bike or gravel bike or whatever they don't really plan that you're going to be out of the saddle that much so rad um and reach reach and rad are really important in mountain biking because you're going to be standing a lot and you want to know that measurement from center of bottom bracket to the top of your head tube. That's reach. Um, that's a super important measurement because that's what's going to matter when you're out of the saddle and riding, which you do a lot more in mountain biking. And then if you like to jump or do anything like that, you want to be out of the saddle and in control. Um, that's why you don't want a super long stem. If you go look at the old school mountain bikes, which were basically road bike geometry <laughs> with a straight handlebar on, the stems were super long. And so if you're ever standing and out of the saddle, you were way over the front wheel, which is super sketchy for technical riding. So that's why mountain bike geometry has evolved the way it is. So when we're talking about gravel bikes, you're almost always seated. So now, effective top tube, you know, your stem length, all that stuff comes more into play because you're going to be seated a lot. So, re so Brad really isn't a gravel bike measurement. I've never really seen it. I mean, what Rad really tells you is if you're Rad Plus and you're riding and you want to pull up the front wheel, the manual, or to go over something, whatever, you're going to be more forward. You're going to have to reach more and you're going to have a lot more pull and your, your body's leverage isn't going to be there to do that. If you're rad neutral or rad minus, now you have the power over the bike and the, the leverage on the bike. That's what rad is for. And so you don't need that kind of a thing for a gravel bike. I mean, Unless you're going to take your gravel bike on a mountain bike trail and go off jumps or something, which I've seen people do. Uh, uh, cool. Um, awesome. How long have we been on here now? Oh, almost an hour. So we can pretty much start wrapping it up. Um, so if you got any last questions, go ahead and ask them uh you know whether it's about bmx anything um and i don't know when i an interesting thing with my channel is when i started really like i i had videos on youtube before but then when i got my knee replacement which was three and a half years ago my initial thing of the channel was Hey, I'm some old dude in my 50s and I got a knee replacement and I'm going to still ride my BMX bike and my mountain bike. So I should YouTube that. Well, that was <laughs> very short stint before I just kind of went into being, well, I should do skills stuff, uh, maintenance, bike reviews, all that stuff. So I just kind of expanded it. And then um, uh, Kenny... Uh, Kenny Short, he's a BMX friend of mine. He was the one that came up with the Shad Life name because it used to be like Shad's Riding Reviews or something like that, or Shad's. I don't even remember what the name of my channel was before, but he said I should just do Shad Life because then I could open it up to more of a variety of things. I can't just, I don't have to be so specific on one set of topics. So that's pretty cool. uh oh d is the xc line really okay well apparently i don't know much about the oh n is enduro okay well then i'll have to look at the d line then so that would probably be would that be like a down country bike then so that would mean it has less travel suspension so 
So the answer to the question about polygon bikes is I honestly don't know that much about them. This was the one that I saw that I was like, and it was on sale for 19.99 that I was just like kind of blown away by. All right. Oh yeah. Before I forget. Let's weigh this thing. My rustler out of the way? I think so. Oh, my back. I can't even, because I turn all the lights off over here because uh, 34.22. Yep, 34.22. I'm gonna say that's kind of what I would expect it to weigh. A little on the heavy side, I mean, compared to my wrestler, it's gonna be a lot heavier. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, do some videos on this. Oh, that's actually texture. Oh, that is so weird. I mean, they put some effort into it, tapered that tube. I mean, this thing's pretty wild. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely need to um, do setup. I'm going to do a video on, because um, this bike's brand new and I haven't done any uh, suspension setup, so I'll be doing a video on the suspension setup of this and how I do that. Um, and then I'll get everything else dialed. And then I'll definitely be doing some riding videos. I actually uh, go up to Cuyuna this weekend. Big surprise there, right? Um, so I'll, that'll be the first place I ride this bike is in Cuyuna um, this Saturday probably. So, And then I'll put out some videos on it then. So, Cool. Let me set this up so it doesn't tip over again. I box rhythm fork, box float rear shock on a bike in this price point. Like if you ever see bikes in this price point, price point, they almost always come with a Rock Shock Select rear and like maybe a Rock Shock 35 or something on the front. That is just totally mind blowing. All right, cool, awesome. Thanks for showing up. Until next time, have a good night. Oh, yeah. Peace.